I'm not willing to fall into the traditional cynicism about government. Let me observe that our government spends an enormous amount of money on the wrong things. I would just like to have a little bit of it on these things which are moonshots, enormous scale things that can benefit the country. You've given us one example of health. <laughs> what, what, what's another moonshot? I think, is, I think, is, is, is fission one of them? Or well, fission, fission. Is, is more controversial, but the, uh, uh, I'll give you two examples. Uh, the, the health thing is, is, um, can be understood as analog meets digital. So up until now, the doctors have been living in an analog world, and God knows it's incredibly painful and complicated, right? And we've been living in this digital world where we have all the math and we understand scalable systems. We finally have now been able to break through with now modern monitoring systems, the genetics breakthrough, the DNA, the sequencing machines, and all that kind of stuff, so that you can get proper personal medicine and you can really change things. So there's a technology called CASP CRISPR-9, which is a way in which you sort of can reassemble and do gene editing. I can describe it if you want, but it's a very, very big deal. Mm. So this is transformative, not just of a little, little city like New York, but of the whole globe, right? That's how profound this is, right? And it's a race, too. There's a similar one in AI and machine learning, which Google is trying to do primarily. So those are, that's one sort of category. Um, in energy, the most interesting question to me is, can you solve, I'll say this rhetorically, can you solve climate change, which I'm sorry to say is actually true, in case you're concerned, right? It is actually true that carbon does actually lead to these things. Uh, there's some evidence, by the way, that, um, that the current relative lull in warming, and I know that it's actually slowed down a little bit and will reverse and get worse pretty soon. Um, I can go on and on about that. There's, there are people who are debating whether the renewable solutions plus the battery solutions are sufficient to solve this problem 100 years from now. Mm. Now, if they're not, the most likely solution is nuclear. But nuclear has a gazillion problems. Nuclear has never been able to be driven from the private sector alone. So here's a question, and I don't know the answer. Do you need a federal program to try to drive to safe nuclear? Mm. Right? That is being debated now. So that's an example of the kind of debate. I'm not taking a position there because I'm not enough of a physicist. Two questions on government. One, one rather obvious one is, out of the existing candidates, I know you're a supporter of, of Hillary's, but in general, do you see any kind of sign that they're thinking in these sort of ambitious ways on the presidential trail? It's important to remember that presidential campaigns are silly season, and, um, and I've done enough campaigns now to, I don't worry too much about it. It's more a question of do you believe that the presidency and the leaders in Europe understand the importance of science uh, and so forth. Um, there has been a problem on the Republican side that, the side that there is a group of Republicans, although not by far not, the, not all of them, who do not admit to the importance of science, and I mean that specifically technology, platforms, the kinds of things that, that are real, right? They don't, they don't, they sort of, I don't know, whatever the prejudice is against, uh, and maybe there's a similar group on the, on the, on the Democratic side, but um, it's a real problem when science becomes politicized, right? And where does that matter to you? Um, if we had not figured out a way to do blood cell, uh, stem cells from blood, you might be dying of some disease because some, some advanced technique that's now available was not available to you. So this stuff matters, right? Remember all those debates about stem mm -hmm. cells? 